Hi there. It's going to be a beautiful weekend. Warmer spring days are coming and a lot of people are really antsy to get into their yards and do some planting. And so we're going to talk a little bit today about how to plant container grown trees, shrubs, evergreens. This even works for perennials too. The principles are pretty much the same. So this is a really cool new uh, willow and it is called Iceberg Alley, which I think means that it's really hardy. And so when you're looking at stuff in the garden center and you're wondering if it's going to be okay overnight when the weather's really cold, something like this willow where there aren't any leaf buds that are new or exposed is perfectly fine to put in your yard. It could be 20 degrees and it wouldn't matter. It could snow or sleet on it and it would be fine. Now, if you look at this burning bush here, this is a little bit farther along. It's got some tender foliage that's, um, that maybe would be um, damaged by uh, temp, night temps getting below freezing. So if you're planting something that looks like this that's leafed out and hasn't had a chance to harden off, then this kind of thing you would want to cover at night if you're planting it in the ground. You can use a floating row cover, which is a spun poly sheet that's really lightweight and protects plants from frost. You could also use a sheet or a pillowcase. I wouldn't use heavy plastic or a tarp because sometimes if we get a little precipitation, that'll weigh the plant down and can sometimes cause a little bit of damage. So when you're planting, you're gonna dig your hole as deep as the soil is in the pot and twice as wide. If your soil is really clayey, resist the urge to make it cushy on the bottom. Doesn't matter so much for a plant like this, but if you had a bigger tree that was heavy, it's gonna sink and that wouldn't be good. If your soil is clay, then you can take your shovel and you can sort of jab around the, the outside of the plant or the planting hole so you're not making a dish. When you take the plant out of the pot, there you go. You can see that this one has some surface roots and you just wanna take your fingers or a garden knife. Big ones like this, you might wanna sort of take out. Otherwise, you can just kind of rough it up a little bit. And then you just pop it into the hole. And then you backfill. Now, when you backfill, you wanna primarily use the soil that you took out of the hole. So you don't wanna put in brand new topsoil or potting soil or anything like that. If your soil is that clay soil that we talked about earlier, you could mix in some compost or some bark mulch if you've got some old leaves, just something to kind of break it up, but no more than like 25 or 30 percent to replace. Then you just kind of, then you uh, backfill the plant or backfill the hole and sort of tamp it down so that it's nice and firm and then you water it in. Now there are a couple other steps that you can do to get your plant off to a little bit better uh, start. This is Root Stimulator and we use this on all of our installations. And this is a fertilizer that is very low in nitrogen but is really high in phosphorus and potassium. And those things encourage root growth and bud development. You mix a couple of tablespoons of this in a gallon of water and you can apply that every other week to your plant until it gets really hot and that will help the plant, the roots uh, develop a little bit faster. We also have Mike. You might hear us talking about this if you ever come to the garden center. Mike is a mycorrhizae product. It is a naturally occurring um, uh, fungus that will sometimes, it's been shown to aid in root development. Now, I'm not personally sure if it works, but the really good thing about Mike is that it will um, activate a five-year warranty um, for your plant, which if you're doing a lot of plantings, I think is really worth it. Uh, you do need to make sure that you have the correct amount of Mike, and we can help you with that at the plant desk, and that it has to be on the receipt with the plant. So if you've got some left over from another, from say last year, you can't use that, you can use it, but it will, not, um, it will not extend the warranty at all. So you wanna make sure that that's a bundle of things on your receipt. Finally, you wanna mulch. We mulch everything that we plant. I mulch at home. This is my favorite. This is just regular hardwood bark mulch. Um, it's not fancy, but it's really effective. You wanna do a two to three layer, two to three inch layer around the root area of your plant. You wanna make sure that it's not actually touching the plant. 
no volcano mulches on trees, please. I know it looks kind of cool, but it really will encourage some, um, some disease development where that bark is touching the trunk. So you want to make sure to move it away. And then you just want to water. So plants need a solid inch of precipitation or watering irrigation once a week through the growing season, through the first growing season for something like this. If it gets really hot and dry in the summer, you might want to step that up to twice a week. The way to know is since you've left this little dish of soil around your mulch, you're just going to stick your finger in there and see what it feels like. This feels like pretty damp and so you could go ahead and not water and then check in a couple days. You'll get a rhythm. It's easy. Just depends on your soil and how the plant's growing and the, how sunny it is and how hot it is. So you just have to work it out for yourself. Everybody's yard is different. So come in and get a couple of plants to spruce up your yard and happy spring from all of us here at the Bruce Company.